So who out there is a fan of commodity fragrances? Are you a fan? Uh, let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. I've been wanting to put together a top 10 commodity fragrances video, but obviously earlier last year they went out of business. But they came back middle of this year and it was best time for me to put together a top 10 list uh, of their fragrances because I enjoy this fragrance house. First time I experienced their fragrances was back in 2013, 2014 when I bought a bottle of whiskey. It's no longer called whiskey. I'll tell you all about it if you haven't caught my previous video on commodity fragrances. But today I'm ranking a commodity fragrances in a top 10 list. So if you're curious to learn about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today I'm talking about commodity fragrances. This is a house that I enjoy and I love the fact that their fragrances are unique and different than the department store fragrances, but also they won't break the bank, you know, break your bank. They're not overly expensive and some of their uh, collections of fragrances are even around the same price as what designer fragrances uh, sell for. So I like that about the fragrances from this house. They're unique, kind of stand out. Uh, fragrances focusing on styles and notes and easy to access you know like they're fragrances that you can actually wear they're not out there and things like that so I'll tell you all about the fragrances I'm ranking them as I said my favorite is at number one my least favorite is at number 10 but you know I like them all because I have them so I'll let you know all about them and their list but before I get to the fragrances if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways so as I said I first bought a bottle of uh, commodities whiskey back in 2013 2013 2014 somewhere around there I totally uh, don't remember they were based out of Los Angeles at the time uh, but now they had moved uh, to New York City and London I think is what they were where they were based out of of course they went out of business earlier last year but then they came back middle of this year and this is the best time for me to launch this video they the fragrances come in three different collections there's a the black collection in bottles like this uh, now those retail as a 10 ml bottle for $26, 100 ml bottle for $105. There's the white collection, same price point. Um, it's 10 ml, $26, 100 ml, $105. And finally, uh, as a platinum collection, 10 ml, $30. 100 ml, $135. So these are all Eau de Parfum concentration fragrances. And I don't have names of perfumers uh, of all the fragrances, so I'm gonna leave the names of the perfumers out in this video. And if you're curious, you can research online and find uh, the perfumers yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the first fragrance, and that is Rain. And I have this at number 10 because it is, after all, watery aquatic fragrance. But I really like the coziness about this fragrance, and it smells like fresh rain on um, flowers, uh, vegetation, outside it smells like the outside and then the smell of the you know if you're walking around like some kind of a garden or park with uh, lots of vegetation and flowers you pick up those smells along with the rain smell that's what I like about this one it's very very cozy because I, I like rainy days I, I find rainy days to be a cozy experience to begin with because I stay indoors stay at home a warm home you know sipping on a glass of wine or some tea or coffee or something and that's the experience I get with this one so it's a, a, a smell of the rain on top of lemon verbena and also lotus uh, blossom so it has a very watery uh, you know quality lotus blossom has a watery quality anyway and you're smelling the rain on top of these flowers there's a little bit of a green dewy wet uh, Accord in here. Uh, some freesia as well. Freesia is a beautiful, beautiful white flower. It smells fantastic. Some musk and bergamot. The overall experience is very, very cozy. It's um, just like it's rained outside. It's uh, I think the one what I get with this one is more after it's rained, but you can you know the the wet drop of the rain is on top of the vegetation and flowers as I said but overall it's like drizzling a little bit just a kind of a very very romantic uh, rainy day so rain is at number 10 uh, a great scent obviously it's number 10 though because I had it I have it there because obviously it's an aquatic and it's not my my favorite style all right ready to get boozed up number nine is gin so gin is one of the fragrances I discussed in the uh, sampler set or discovery kit that I did a video about commodity fragrances recently. It was one of the three fragrances that is in that kit. And gin is a very, very clean, fresh, woody, aromatic fragrance. It's ultra clean because I find the smell of gin to be clean anyway. I've had plenty of gin tonics myself. And uh, the smell of uh, the gin in here is very, very clean and refined. So it's created with the juniper berries, obviously, because that's what 
you use to create uh, the actual liqueur or spirit itself with lots of spicy um, and uh, zingy ginger in here. There's a zingy ginger quality in here. There's some lime as well. So basically it's like you're sipping on a gin tonic but you're wearing it. It's ultra clean, fresh but spicy, woody, and aromatic at the same time because uh, juniper berries are very, very aromatic. Uh, I guess you can call them spices or herbs. Um, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little berry, uh, but uh, it smells really, really great in here. I, I would call this uh, one of those fragrances that's probably just an evolution of something like the eccentric molecule fragrances because it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of depth to it because it's ultra clean and fresh, but it still has some substance to it. It's not like a, a very minimalistic uh, wearing experience with the eccentric molecules fragrances. So I would say if you like those kind of fragrances, but you want a little more oomph to it, you can go to something like this because I just find it very, very clean and fresh and aromatic and woody. So that's gin at number nine. So at number eight, it's bergamot. And bergamot is a great, great bergamot. This is probably a great bergamot for the vetiver lover because I find that the vetiver in here and the violet leaves also are pretty prominent with the bergamot. So in the end, you don't get an ultra sweet and uh, juicy. Uh, it's juicy, but you don't get like an ultra sweet, like almost rotting bergamot. And you also don't get like a very sharp and tart and sour bergamot. It's a nice balanced bergamot. It's perfect. And then of course the, the earthy vetiver and then the ozonic violet leaves kind of tone it down and make it grounded and uh, a little more balanced in here. Along with that, you also get a little bit of a mint and geranium note. It's minty because geranium already has some mintiness as well. And plus it's a little slightly peppery and has rosy nuances. You get all those in here, but very lightly, very, very lightly. There's some jasmine patchouli and musk. It's a great, great bergamot. It's here because, you know, I have some of my other favorites uh, after this. But if you're looking for your uh, ultimate uh, bergamot fragrance, this might be it. This is part of the platinum collection. This is a higher priced collection, obviously, as I said. So that's bergamot at number eight. Eight. And the next fragrance at number seven is whiskey, but it's no longer called whiskey. It's W with stars and a Y, and that's what they have done with this name. And it's not available as a full bottle. I don't know if they're going to bring it back as a full bottle, but it's part of that discovery kit I did a video on. It has gin, whiskey, and then moss. Obviously, those are the three fragrances in that kit, and that's the only way you can get whiskey currently. But I bought my bottle, and this is how much I have way back in 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, and I still love this one. It's warm and spicy, but it's not like over the top deep and rich. There's some freshness about it. There's a little bit of my, like, uh, you know, uplifting. It has a not, it doesn't weigh you down is what I'm trying to say. It's like, like ultra syrupy. Um, it's got oak in there uh, because that's where you get this kind of like whiskey, um, uh, kind of cask kind of a smell in here uh, and it makes for a great great wearing experience. I feel like this is a great fall fragrance because it has the warm spicy vanillic and um, oaky touches but it also has the freshness and the aromatic touches that would actually uh, make it uh, appropriate for fall because you know in the fall it doesn't get too cold obviously it's getting a little cold these days but I just find that, that this is uh, as whiskey is a great great uh, wearing experience in the fall days. If you don't if you don't know this one, do check it out. As I said, it's currently only available in that discovery kit, but hopefully they'll bring it back as a bottle. And it's no longer called whiskey, as I said. It's W with stars and a Y. Anyway, that is whiskey at number seven. So the next fragrance is a fragrance called tea. It's a very, very cozy tea fragrance, and I don't have it as a full bottle currently. It's uh, as a 10 ml like this, and this is what the 10 mls look like if you end up with 10 mls, which are easier and don't take as long to wear. This is part of the white collection. Now, oolong tea, honey, basil, tobacco, slightly lemony uh, touches as well. It's fresh, it's very uplifting. It has sweet and warm touches. And what I like about this one is it settles to a very light tobacco-ish touch, but at the top, it's all very tea-like. It's very, very cozy and comforting. It's sweetened with the, with the honey, some aromatic touches of green, uh, aromatic touches of basil. I do get a little bit of lemony touch. It's almost like there's a lemon squeeze in there, but very, very light uh, as well, just like the basil is. There are some floral nuances in here as well. I feel like there's a little bit of jasmine or something like magnolias thrown in, but it's a very, very cozy, comforting tea fragrance. Really love, uh, you know, wearing this one because I just love the way tea fragrances smell. And I love the coziness. You can wear this uh, as a fragrance to just feel cozy and relaxed or wear it to bed even because it has that, you know, a 
it's just a very, very cozy, relaxed experience. The great thing about this one is that it does have that kind of tobacco-ish dry down, but it doesn't uh, become overly tobacco-ish, if that makes sense. It's a great balanced fragrance, just a very, very warm and sweet uh, fragrance, and I love the combination of the notes. It does remind me a little bit of green tea fragrances. I don't know if you're familiar with wearing green tea fragrances, just a little bit. It has a little bit of a, a hint of a green tea experience, but in the end, it's made with oolong tea, according to the notes, and uh, it's a fantastic uh, tea fragrance at number six. Check that out if you don't know it. Number five is Moss, and Moss is the third fragrance that was in that uh, discovery kit I did a video about recently. Uh, I fell in love with this one because I love the mossy uh, note. It's also, mossy fragrances are very foamy. It's almost like, just like you're touching mousse, like you know where you put on your hair, and when you put it on your hands, it's like a foam. That's what I get with mossy fragrances. It's created with uh, oak moss, but in the end, it's a very, very fresh, earthy, greenish kind of an experience here with this fragrance. It's deep and rich, but it's also light and airy at the same time because of that foaminess. Oak moss, cedarwood, pedigran. It's wet, cool, and clean. Uh, damp is coming to mind as well. If you've ever seen a, a, a ground covered in green moss, it's almost like you're wearing that. Uh, I don't know if that sounds great to you or not, but uh, I feel like this is a great, great scent. It's, it's, a, it's a fragrance you can wear fresh in the summertime, but kind of deep and rich in the fall uh, and the springtime. I think it might be a little too light for winter, but there's really no rules with wearing fragrances. Anyway, great scent from uh, commodity moss, oak moss in the end. It's fresh, green, and earthy. Just a very, very pleasant fragrance. If you like green, earthy fragrances, check out moss from commodity. Number four is Oris, and Oris is focusing on Oris butter, or taken from the iris plant or flower. Uh, it's the root, Oris is the root, and you typically, for me, Oris is creamy, buttery. Uh, there's a butteriness about this one. When you're wearing it, you totally experience the butteriness. You can smell it, like, you can totally smell it. But there is a little bit of um, powderiness as well. Oris, iris fragrances go powdery all the time. And this definitely has it. Under there, there's a little bit of a aldehydic touch. I'm picking up aldehydes from some, some place, and I don't know if the, where that's coming from. It's not listed. But in the end, there's some lily of the valley in here, probably from the lily of the valley. I can maybe say that. There's some spiciness from pink pepper. There's tea, coriander, bergamot, vanilla, vetiver, cedar, patchouli. A great, great fragrance. Cozy, comfortable fragrance because the butteriness and the creaminess gives that cozy, comforting vibe. The powderiness gives it a very kind of like uplifting uh, experience. But in the end, it's a, a deep and rich fragrance you can wear in the fall, winter time. I feel like it's appropriate. And even springtime as well. And if you want to wear something like this in the summertime, you can as well, but just control your sprays. In the end, it's a great experience. And one thing I do want to add here, before the, the company went out of business, I had soaps of uh, two of their fragrances, Oris and Tonka. Amazing soaps. I don't know if... I've never experienced such a luxurious experience with soaps that I have with anything. I don't really buy soaps that much, but when I had these really big blocky soaps, I just used them up and they were fantastic. The Oris one matched Oris so well and I'd wear the fragrance on top of uh, after showering with the Oris soap. It was such a luxurious, uh, amazing um, shower experience, just the going on your skin. Um, that kind of smooth and buttery cleanness uh, was amazing. Anyway, hopefully they'll bring back the soaps. I'm not sure if they do have them currently. I haven't checked, but I hope they do. But Oris is a great, great fragrance. Check it out if you don't know it. All right, three more left. The third one is gold. Do you know gold? Man, this is delicious. Are you a vanilla lover like me? I am obsessed with vanilla and cozy, comforting vanilla fragrances. This one actually, to me, it's almost like... Vanilla sugar or sugar and vanilla together have been crystallized in a pan and they're all kind of breaking up. I get like sugar crystal-y kind of experience with this one, but it's kind of spicy as well. There's some spicy touches with this one. Uh, there are juniper berries uh, listed as a note, but in the end it's vanilla, tonka beans, amber, benzoin, sandalwood, musk, vetiver, bergamot comes in as well. But uh, the benzoin to me is a resin, it's a vanillic resin, and when you look at the resin itself, there is a little bit of a sugary crystallized kind of a appearance with that, so maybe that's what's giving it to me, but uh, I'm getting sugar crystals in this one and, and it's a fantastic experience. When you wear it, there's this like 
crackling uh, experience with this fragrance. But it's very, very cozy. It's a comfortable fragrance, perfect for fall and winter. It's sweet, it's vanillic, it's ambery, syrupy, molassesy, balsamic, and just a great, great fragrance experience. I didn't know how great this one was, and I'm glad to have it in the collection at set number three because I love vanilla. It's very, very cozy and spicy, and it's $105. It doesn't uh, disappoint with this one. If you like vanilla, it's just like a, it's a I should say this kind of reminds me of fragrances like um, Tijota from uh, Indalt. It kind of reminds me of fragrances Bonnie and Sanse from uh, I think it's uh, Atelier des Ors. There's several others, maybe a little bit of Diptyque's Eau de Well. It's almost like all of these fragrances combined into one. I don't know. I'm just getting that vibe with it, and I love that about it. There's the spiciness about it, the syrupy, ambery touches, the molassesy touches, sugary touches, caramelly touches. All of that is in here. Number three is gold. Number two, oh man, so good. Top three is my favorite, obviously. Nectar. Nectar is a gift from the gods is what I should say. What I like about this one is my obsession with pomelo or grapefruit notes uh, is full on with this one. It's lots of that. But neroli and orange blossom come in as well to kind of like contrast. It's a nice contrast because neroli orange blossom is from the orange tree, the flowers. Pomelo is a different kind of a citrus and they work so well together. There's honeysuckle, tangerine, musk, bergamot, tonka, and it's amazing. The, the, the entire combination is amazing. It's such a great citrus fragrance, but it's a citrus floral fragrance because obviously you're using the citrus of the pomelo, the tangerine along with the flowers of the uh, orange, which is neroli and orange blossom. There is that sweet honeysuckle as well and the entire concoction is just over the top amazing. If you know fragrances like Jo Malone's Orange Blossom, you should definitely check this one out. It reminds me of that, but it's got a lot more depth to it. It's got a lot more substance and a lot more things happening to it. Whereas Orange Blossom from Jo Malone, which I've worn so much of, I still have a bottle, seems to have gotten lighter since I first wore it in the 2000s. It is a little more lighter currently. Uh, it just focuses on the orange blossom. Here you have layers of different stuff happening where at the same time it's reminding me of Jo Malone Orange Blossom, you have the pomelo coming in, the honeysuckle, the tangerine. It's a, it's a nectar of the gods, I think that's what I should say, a gift from the gods. This is really, really delicious. I'll definitely be putting this one on lists when, uh, come summertime or spring summertime because to me, it smells like spring orange blossoms blooming with citruses of grapefruit or pomelo nearby. Anyway, nectar is number two. Last but not least at number one, it's Tonka. Tonka is number one, it has to be at number one. So Tonka focuses on Tonka beans and you know, it does remind me of Feb Delicious. Even I, I did a video saying if you can't get Feb Delicious, you can definitely check this one out because you can. But for me, Feb Delicious goes into a cacao cherry direction a little bit liqueur, cherry liqueur direction. Here it goes into a bitter almondy direction. So it, in the end, it smells like a Feb Delicious, then it doesn't because this one goes a lot more almondy. There's also sandalwood here. There's a creamy, milky layer of um, uh, sandalwoodiness here. There's some benzoin, which is a, a fantastic vanillic uh, resin. Cardamom comes in. There's some spiciness in here. It definitely does. Uh, there's a little bit of a greenish artemisia note and some uh, light uh, white floral of magnolia, which really, really complements the sandalwood creaminess. Um, and the whole entire concoction is really, really fantastic. This is a great fragrance to wear. Um, fall, winter, uh, I think it's perfectly appropriate. And if you're looking for a little bit of a change from uh, Feb Delicious, because it does go into the chocolate and cherry direction, you can go into the almondy, bitter almondy direction with this one with the creamy sandalwood dry down. There is, of course, the spiciness, don't get me wrong. It is there, but in the end, it's a great, great Tonka bean fragrance from the House of Commodity. So that's at number one, my favorite fragrance from Commodity. What are your favorite fragrances from Commodity fragrances? How would you rank this list of uh, fragrances? Put a comment down let me know uh, find out so I can find out um, how you would rank this um, uh, list of uh, fragrances if you have your own favorites and you have several of the fragrances you can also put down how you would rank the ones you have as well anyway guys thanks so much for watching today's video uh, there is a discount code did I mention that at the beginning of the video there is a discount code of 10% off if you use the code perfume guy 10 at uh, commodity fragrances which I have a link to in the info box you can use that if you're interested in uh, buying any of the fragrances as I said, they're not overly expensive, $105 for 100 ml in the black and uh, white
Life Collection and 135 and 100 ml for the Platinum Collection. Of course, the 10 mls are available as well. Those are great ways to sample uh, the fragrances. And that Discovery Kit with the uh, whiskey, with the new name, gin and moss is a, a great uh, sampler set for you to check out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.